This is Introduction to 3D Character Development in Maya. I'm Jason Weiser, and in this video, we will build on our basic volumes to add details for clothing, face, and hands. We will also increase our tessellation for a more rounded form, paying attention to quads, smooth edge loops, and even spacing of our lines, even tessellation. Going back to the front view of the model we started in video number one, we'd like to shape this arm to more accurately represent the profile in this drawing. We can go to the Edge component mode and select across these edges, and in the Modeling Toolkit, we can hit Connect. This line is going to represent the longer cuff, specifically where the sleeve breaks when it hits the cuff. Every detail needs at least two lines, and so we can hit another connect, and this time move and shrink it to represent the beginning of the cuff, and this change where the end of the sleeve is larger creates the detail. I'm going to add one more line here for the sleeve to expand it, using move, rotate, and scale, all three transforms. And then, I'm going to make a line that is smaller. This is a uniform scale. So now we have that full curve. We're going to keep things relatively low poly, relatively low detail. When we started this model, we were at about a thousand polygons for the two sides. We can see the polygon count by going to display, heads up display, and turning on polygon count and we can see here the object that we have selected. This is going to get up to between three and 5,000 polygons when we're done for a total polygon count of the two halves of somewhere between five and 10,000 polys. Here's a line for a bicep. Hitting R to non-uniform scale it flat, E to rotate, W to move, we're able to get sense of an armpit. Can add another line here to add to our elbow. And we don't need to be perfectly accurate at this point, but we should be striving for something close. If you did a nice job on your orthographic diagrams, you should be able to trust them and make your model fit them. That's a pretty good starting place for that arm. Now let's go down to the leg. Where the pant leg breaks against the boot is an important detail we need to create. Going back to edge mode, selecting across these lines, we hit connect, R to non-uniform scale, W to make sure it's where we want the top of the boot to be. Then select again, hit connect, W to drag it down, R to scale it to get where the pants larger, where it breaks and folds against the boot. One more line here to get the calf. Perhaps one more line to help make the break a bit more rounded. And we can go to vertices to bring these in. And then one last line here in the lower leg to help support the knee, which we can rotate down. Looking here on the side view, we're going to want to go to vertices and bring these two forward. In the upper leg, we want a line for the thigh, a line for the top of the knee, and in the case of these particular pants, a line that lets us get this point. Going to vertices, we can pull these out, and we can bring this vertex down to really follow the silhouette. I'm going to add one more edge for these particular pants in order to get something of this form on the side, the extra cloth. And then looking at the side view, bringing these vertices in. Next, we can work here on the jacket itself. We have an upper part of the jacket that breaks on a cuff where it meets the pants. Going to Edge, we can select this edge and hit Connect, and drag up, double-click on this line. This will be the upper part of the jacket, and this will be the lower. Bring them relatively close together, and we can form that detail.
To get a pocket like this one, we cut the form directly onto the surface in order to establish the shape on the model. And once we have the form, we'll be able to extrude. We can use target weld to simplify the form and remove any edges we didn't mean to make. Always make sure you have no other vertices selected when you target weld. And now I'm going to select these two vertices to hit connect. And these two. This creates four-sided shapes around the form. These quads are better for character deformation. All quads, all four-sided shapes, are actually two triangles with the center line made invisible, left in a state of flux. Anything more than four sides still has those invisible lines, and it's less predictable which direction they'll go in. And so we try to make everything quads so we can easily see our form and so we can predict how it will deform. Triangles are not bad, but a lot of the helpful selection tools, like being able to double-click on a line and have it select the entire loop, these only work when we have quads, and so we try to maintain quads. Now that we have this form, we can select the polygons and extrude them to make the pocket. R for scale, and looking back at the front view, we want this top part extruded again to be the flap of the pocket. Any extrude that we make, we want to be a detail that is greater than 90 degrees. The form reads better with obtuse angles. We can take more time to try to get the shape to be more accurate to our diagram. The collar is created much the same way. Using multi-cut, we cut in the shape up the upper half of the torso and then around the neck. Once again, we're going to want to make quads and certainly cut down any shapes that are more than four sides, any n-gons, so that they are three or four sides to start. We'll clean this up in just a little while. Going to the vertex component, in order to adjust any of these vertices that felt they went astray, and target weld any that feel like they're extra. If the model's beginning to feel confusing with the number of lines, it can be easier if you go back to the perspective view where we do not have X-ray turned on, and also to remember to keep orbiting around your form. 3D is meant to be understood in motion. Now some of these superfluous edges can be removed. This edge here could be removed by target welding the two endpoints, or we can go to Edit Mesh Collapse, which collapses the edge into a single point. Selecting an edge, hitting the backspace key, or on a Macintosh, the delete key that is next to the plus symbol, returns it to a state of flux. So now that we have the shape of that collar, right-click for face, select these faces, and hit Extrude. Increase the thickness, and the offset just a little bit. Start with 0.1 to see how that looks. In this case, I think that was a bit too much, 0 
There it's got some bending without being too small. Removing these faces in the middle, these can be brought together. You can avoid having to bring your face halves together if you position the head more accurately in the center before you attach. Selecting this face and selecting this edge, this can be dragged in and the two sides meet. Her scarf is non-symmetrical, so I'm going to add it as a separate object. It could also be extruded from this object and then adjusted at the end when the two sides are put together. Next, I'm going to add a center line down this arm, which, continuing through the fingers, will turn each of these fingers from a four-sided shape into a six-sided shape. The arm will become eight sides, and the fingers will each become six. Going back to object mode, hitting Command-1 to isolate the selection, I can click on this edge, and then double-click on this edge to select the entire arm, hit Connect, and then W to pull it out. And then select this edge, double-click this edge for the entire arm, hit Connect, and W to pull it out. This vertex and this vertex should be connected, and this one and this one can be connected to make a quad here. This triangle and this triangle we will deal with later. Now for each of these fingers, we select one side of edges, hit connect, hit F to make it the center of the selection so it is easy to manipulate, and drag it out. Select one edge, double click on the other side, hit connect, hit W, drag out, select an edge, double click this edge, connect, drag out. And now that we have that round form on those fingers, we want to connect up all the places that are missing those lines. We can go back to Vertex, select these two vertices, and hit Connect. Click on these two vertices, we can hit Connect. And now we can pull back the top and the bottom vertices so that that webbing is a bit more clear. Here on the thumb, we do the same thing. Hit connect. Pull this out. Connect those vertices. Connect. Drag it out and connect those vertices. The end of each finger also needs to be connected. And once we have all of them connected, we can select that edge at the end of each finger and pull it out to make it more rounded. To make an even more detailed finger, an additional line can be cut across the top and the bottom so that this center tip would be more of a point and the fingers would be eight sides instead of six. But this is sufficient for our purposes. To improve the triangles here at the top, let's use multi-cut and cut an additional line across the chest, over the shoulder, and across the back. Any time we cut a line in an organic form, we then want to adjust that line so that it contributes to curves and isn't just sitting on the surface. Edit Mesh, Collapse. Edit Mesh, Collapse. These very long polygons won't deform or light particularly well. So it's a good idea to break them up, which will also allow us to make the torso a bit more rounded. We 
can select all these edges for a connect. Whenever we have two triangles that are touching tips, we can multi-cut a line between their sides and then select that line and go to Edit Mesh Collapse. And now we have three quads. Here again, two triangles. Multi-cut, multi-cut, return, hit W, select that line, Edit Mesh Collapse. And so those triangles in that area of the form are now handled. To take care of this triangle, I'm going to draw a new line down the side of the leg. The leg could use a bit more detail anyway. Starting there, I'm going to double click to select all of those edges and do a connect. And as usual, anytime we draw a line, we then want to move it out to make sure it contributes to the curve on the form. And now multi-cut. We can target weld this vertex in and remove that edge. Holding down Shift adds to your selection. Holding down Control Shift adds to your selection and makes sure that anything that was already selected doesn't get unselected. Because if I just hold down Shift, selection is a toggle. Anything that was selected gets deselected. Control Shift just selects. I'll hit Connect and do a slight non-uniform scale to make that more rounded on either side. Continuing this line from before, this helps this pocket to be more rounded. And now to take care of that line, I'm going to multi-cut from the end into it, and thus we have three quads. For bending at the waist, it would be a good idea if there was another line here. Control delete removes the edge and the vertices to either side of it. And going back to the front view, we can check on our form. Here we need to add a couple of divisions to get the separation between pants and jacket. This line here can be used for the jacket bottom. Looks like this got a little bit too high. And now we can draw another line which will be the top of the pants. The non-uniform scale brought it in on the front and the back. And now we can simply drag it in on the side. This will be a good time. Pause to select around the entire form. Go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge, and then find the edges between forms. Like, for example, this line, which is the dividing line between pants and jackets. We can go to Mesh Display, Harden Edge. And this one, that's the dividing line between this jacket cuff and the body of the jacket. Mesh Display, Harden Edge. It just changes the way light moves over that surface, but it really helps to emphasize those forms that we designed. Here on the cuff and here on the wrist, because of the triangles coming into the wrist at the base, we'll have to click twice to get all the way around that wrist. And here, where the collar meets the jacket, all of those can be made harder.
all the way around this pocket and around the flap. So now the pants and the jacket are in pretty good shape. For the boots, I would make the laces as a separate form, and I would texture these laces on for a low to medium polygon character, but I would like to get some more roundness in the boots and to make a heel. I'm going to start by selecting around this side view of the foot, and then holding down Control, deselect everything but the bottom. So I can do an extrude straight down. Hit W and pull it down. It defaults to the original front view for the selection, but I can go back here at any time. Pulling these vertices forward a little bit, and these down. There is a curve to this boot that I'd like to have represented in my form. Select these edges, hit Connect, and change segments to 3. Hit W, and drag these backwards. The distance between these lines is the tessellation, the spacing between the divisions. And we want the boot, the leg, the arms, the torso to all have approximately even tessellation, but we want the tessellation to increase at the joints. So right now there are three lines that are making up this knee. And to make this edge look a bit smoother, I would drag this down. I can increase the tessellation at the knee by doing a single line connect and then a little bit of scale and move, so that instead of three lines, it becomes five, and is likely to deform a little bit better in that area. The arm should get the same treatment. There should be a connect here, and a connect here, so that there are five lines around that elbow. This is the main elbow line. I'll bring it back a little bit. Here's a new line that was just created to support it, and here's the one on the other side. So now with five lines for this elbow, we can expect a much smoother transition when it comes time to bend that elbow for animation. The default lines in the bottom of the foot can be control deleted, control backspaced. So now we have two simple lines going across it. Selecting across these edges, I would then create two lines. Hit W. Double-click the first one, hit R, scale it flat, and then move these vertices so that they contribute to a curve. I'm going to bring these forward a bit more. So now there's a bit more roundness in that form. We could decide that we want that to be even rounder there at the tip. So bringing these forward, we can select these edges and do another connect, perhaps just one line. If your character is barefoot, then instead of this basic shoe form, you would create something closer to a hand with all the toes visible. I'm going to move these over a little bit. And I would like to round out this leg in the back and the front. So I'll add a connect and a scale, non-uniform in both sides. And then move the lines around it to get a smoother curve. These two should be connected, so at least we don't have anything more than four sides. To make this front more rounded, I'm going to draw an edge this way around the form. Connect, flatten, scale. And to distinguish between boot and sole, we can select this edge and bevel it to turn it into two edges. We can even set this segment to two to add a third, commit it with W, Select the center one and have it 
come in a little bit. And now would be a good time to select these edges to go Mesh Display Soften and then double click on the center line to do Mesh Display Harden. I am liking this foot being a little bit longer than my diagram. So I'm going to choose to leave it be this length. But I'm going to pull in the back. Most of this detail on the shoe is going to be painted on. But at the very least, I can bring in this side a little bit and bring this side out. So it follows a bit more of the curve of a foot. This side is a little bit wider than the sides around it. For the purposes of even tessellation, we would like it to be more evenly spaced. That's a little bit better. It's a similar issue on this side. It's particularly pronounced here, so I'm going to adjust this area. Hitting Q, I can select without moving, and then W to move. E to rotate. And that's slightly more evenly tessellated. Hitting Command-1, that's how that body is looking all together. Now for the face. Our goals for the face are both to enhance the likeness by fixing any proportions, but also try to flesh out some of the details, like the nostrils and more of the mouth, and to create edge loops around the lips and around an eye so that we could have animation in those areas. We want to create a cavity in the mouth for teeth, perhaps even a tongue, and a cavity in the eye socket where we could put an eye sphere. Here in the front view, I'm going to start by adjusting the vertices of the lips to more closely match the diagram. Hitting W, I want to get a little bit bigger than the drawing, so there's room to extrude. And now I'll cut in the eye shape. Multi-cut. And I can begin to get the brow. Here in the perspective view, I can draw connection lines. And I want to create edge loops around the form. These loops will help the eye to expand and contract without crunching. I expect to need to add at least one or two lines up the forehead and around the head to round out the skull anyway. And here's what those lines are for more locally. Eventually, all of these need to make quads. I can begin to flesh out a nostril. and add a division across the cheek in order to be able to round that cheek out. Hitting F to make this the center of my selection. Pulling these forms out a little bit. Making sure no vertices are selected for target weld. So here I've got, so far, two circles around the eye 
an additional one, two, three, four lines, including this original bottom line, coming from the nose across the cheek and to the side. You can choose a different number, but that's giving us a good starting place. Selecting the polygons of the nose, we can do an extrude and W to pull this out. And then in the edge component mode, and with the scale tool and the move tool, we can move out the form. Selecting the edges and soften edge. So now that we have relatively smooth edge loops around the form, built from quads, we can select this eye shape, hit extrude, and push it in to act as the cavity. It doesn't need to go in very far. Its goal is just to create the shape that the eye sphere can go into. Selecting the edges, mesh display, soften. We can create a sphere. In the channel box, rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees. And then scale it to the needed size for the eye. That's about right. And we want to set all of these to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 at this size and position and orientation. So we go to Modify, Freeze Transforms, and we want to name this I left. And this would be textured for the eye. We could do one more edge loop using connect in order to have a more closable eyelid, but that's already in pretty good shape. We just want to try to get the eye to curve around the sphere. That's pretty good. Let's continue this line down the mouth. And let's get both of these to continue down the chin. We don't want all of these triangles. So this can come down here. and this one as well. And finally this one. And this shape here can be collapsed in order to have quads. So I don't love this topology, but it's going to be covered in this case by the scarf anyway. Going back to the mouth, these new vertices need to contribute to the form. We 
also wants to adjust those vertices here in the side view. We can see that this process would have been easier if I had fixed it in the side view before I added much more detail. Now that we have a relatively rounded form, we can extrude in the mouth. Delete this central polygon, and then in object mode, isolate this so we can easily work from the inside. Selecting all around that mouth, interior, hit connect, R for scale, and drag it up to make more of a cavity. These two edges can be beveled in order to bring out lips. And these edges should also be beveled so as to not have such a sharp edge. But perhaps instead of beveling, I can hit connect, drag this over, and scale in a little bit. We can make these more rounded with another connect. And then select these edges to soften. Teeth can start as a cylinder, which we can make into a tube. Reduce the height. Set the radius to 0 0.5, 0 0.35. Bring forward a little bit. Set the axis to, let's say, 24 so that we can delete half, both front and back. We can select the remaining edges and do a connect, set to 4. And in face mode, we can delete the top and the bottom, except for the last row. and select the top and the bottom inside edges and do a bridge, which builds the geometry between them. Lowering the height, we now have a half tooth row. Hitting D, bringing it down, so we'll call this teeth bottom, command D, duplicate, Let's actually put the pivot in the middle, and this will be teeth top. Hit Command-1, Edit, Duplicate Special, Duplicates. Her mouth got a little bit wide. We can bring that in. And then working in the front view,
Sometimes I do the ears before fleshing out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Extrude. Then I then scale and push back. And then going to the side view, adjusting all of these vertices to position the ear according to the diagram. At this point, I like to reduce the amount of detail here at the ear. I can always cut those lines back in later, but this makes it a little bit easier to manage. The top of the ear comes from about where the eye is located, the bottom about where the nose is. I'm getting my ear shape, and then I will scale this a little bit smaller so that I can extrude. We extrude outward, but we don't want this robot shelf appearance. We need to make sure the front is smoothed out. To do that, we can push this back and rotate it outward, and we get a smoother result. We can also now scale it larger. Then we extrude again, pull that geometry out, hit R, Scale it a bit smaller, rotate again. And then extrude one more time to scale smaller and push in. Then we can take this polygon here and bring it inwards and a little bit out to act as the tragus of the ear. And then it's good to draw quads. And we can also target weld away some of the detail. Select around the form, mesh display, soften edge. She has an ear. We can continue these multi cuts from before. I'm going to allow this to terminate into the back of the collar. I'd like another line here to more evenly space out the divisions on the neck. We'll have to deal with that triangle. A single connect will help. And then connect. Control delete to remove that edge. And these vertices can be adjusted to create a bit more of a rounded form. This would be better to do in the top view. but it doesn't need to be perfect as we're going to be covering this with hair. Let's give this neck a couple of edge loops so that it can bend, a bit of a neck curve, and also come in. The way that this zigzags is something we want to deal with. Smooth edge loops means doing the poly pushing vertex by vertex to get a nice looping curve on each of these edges. You'll see a much smoother surface on the face when everything has been smoothed out.
Now to support face animation on the mouth, we could use two or three edge loops going around the mouth. I'm going to take this edge and bevel it. And then working in the side view, smooth these details out into nice long curves. Let those lines continue around the form, and we could use a couple of edge loops here on the side of the face so that we get better movement of light over the surface of the model. Even tessellation helps to avoid strange crunching when it comes to deforming the model for animation, but also helps the way light moves over its surface. I think two will be good. Bending those out slightly. taking these forms that we made earlier and making sure they are contributing to the curves. Again, we don't care too much back there because hair is going to cover it. But here in front, we can move this over a little bit to create more even spacing between these lines, even tessellation. Edit Mesh Collapse, Edit Mesh Collapse, and I'm going to allow those triangles for now here on that side of the face. Certainly we could continue this curve around the back, but this should not present significant problems with animation. And there we have the more detailed face. As we've seen, the more vertices we've got, the harder it is to adjust the proportion. Let's select our form, go to the channel box. We have a lot of history to delete. Edit, delete by type history, save. And because we've been working for more than an hour, file, save scene as, O1. If we save a new copy every hour, then if the program crashes, the most we lose is an hour's worth of work. The next step is to add the hair, the scarf, and the goggles.